So you want to learn how to create this AI match cut effect instead of basically any editing software. Pretty easy and super simple. Well, I'm about to break down just that inside of this tutorial. And I'll be using After Effects and an AI website to do this. Essentially, you could do this in any editing software. But follow along and I'm going to break it down for you guys. Real quick before we get into it, I just want to let you guys know that I'm Lurking Visuals and I run my own editing store where we sell editing presets and assets for video editors just like you. So if you're having trouble feeling like your workflow is a little bit too slow or you just want to level up your edits in general, make sure to press the first link in the description and check out all of my editing packs for yourself. But let's get right into the tutorial. So I'm in After Effects right now and I got this music video right here. And for this part, where it says nachos, I'll be using an AI to create like some nacho images and I'll be match cutting them in a couple of frames to create a cool looking effect that I've seen a lot of editors do recently. And you can do this with basically anything. I've seen people do it with like stop signs or money, depending on what the artist say in the song, which is a pretty cool effect. You can get really creative with it, but I'm gonna head to the AI website. So right now I'm in lumalabs.ai and I'm in the dream machine or just Google Luma Labs. And as you can tell, I've kind of tried it out a little bit. All I did for the first one, I just typed out create an image of nachos and it created this whole plate of nachos and but then I told it to just create an image of one nacho chip and it created this. And one thing I've seen a lot of people do is actually head to ChatGPT and then tell ChatGPT to help you write a prompt. So you can tell it like help me write a prompt for lumalabs.ai and then type out your prompt. So here ChatGPT helped me write a prompt. So I'll just copy that one because this one is more detailed, but I guess we'll get something a little bit better and I'll paste it in here and see what I get this time. So as you can tell right now, I got plenty of different AI images of these nacho chips. So what I'll be doing with these is just download all of them and then just import them back into your editing software. And like I said, you can mess with the prompt, get whatever you'd like to, or just mess with a lot of different AIs to get a lot of different stuff. But just to keep this as simple as possible, I'll just stick to this one and this nacho chip. So I'll download all of them and I'll see you guys when I'm back in After Effects. So as you can tell, I'm in After Effects right now and I got all of my nacho clips lined up right here. If I play through, it looks like this. So now all I will do is just simply select all of them holding shift and press S to size it up. You can do this in whatever software you're using. And since I'm basically just doing a tutorial, I'm not gonna worry about the watermark, but if you're doing like a music video, then you could just size it up till you get rid of the watermark or just mask it out like this. And then press M on your keyboard, invert your masking, and then make a content aware fill to get rid of that watermark. But I won't go through that. I have another tutorial on that, which you can find on the channel. But right now it looks like this. And I'll try out a few different things just to spice it up a little bit. The first thing that I'll be doing is creating a new adjustment layer. Now there are a few different effects you can add just to spice this up a little bit more. I've seen a lot of people use a posterize time effect just to drag down the frame rate. And as you can tell, all of my nacho clips are in, are just there for three frames each and then it switches. So you can actually lower down the frame rate as long as you don't have them in frame for like one frame. And I'll change the frame rate to like 12. I mean, it doesn't really make a huge difference since all of the clips are so short. So instead, I'll disable that one. So I'll actually add a tint effect. And this is just to give it some extra texture and try to make it look a little bit more serious since it's just a taco chip in a, in a rap music video. And then I'll add on an add grain effect. And I'll change the viewing mode to final output and the intensity to 1.5. And you can mess with the size, drag it down if you'd like to, or just drag it up. But I like it when it's like around 0.7. So I'll keep the grain like that. And then I'll add on a Sapphire hotspot effect, which is a plugin since it's from Sapphire. But if you do have this, then it will definitely look good on these type of effects. So I'll turn it down to zero here at the first frame and create a keyframe. Then head all the way to the end of this scene and then turn it up a little bit. Not too much, you just want some a little bit of that extra texture so to like 0.4 or actually we can turn it up a little bit more let's do 0.5 and now i got this going on which is cool but i think i can spice it up a little bit more with some of my presets so i'll head up to effects and presets and under my opium presets default version i have an add-on version 2 but inside of the default version i'll be dragging on this laggy disk preset 
and just drag it onto the adjustment layer like this. Now I got this little VHS look going on also, it's nothing too much, but just some extra detail to the clip. And the last thing that I'll be adding onto this is a transform effect and I'll drag it onto the adjustment layer. And the only thing that I'll be doing to this one is keyframing the scale at the beginning right here. And then all the way from the start, I'll drag it all the way to the end over here. And then just create a zoom. So like zoom into like 120. That way I can create some kind of tension and like a little bit more energy to the clip. And I also think that I can add on a shake to this just as a final touch to spice it up a little bit more. So I'll drag on a sapphire shake. And here at the beginning, I'll turn it back to zero and I'll keyframe it from there and turn the frequency up to like 12, turn on motion blur, and then I'll go all the way to the end and I'll turn up the amplitude a little bit just to like 0.5. And I think it's a little bit too much right now, so I'll just turn back the frequency to eight. And right now I'm pretty happy with what I got. And I'll actually add in a tiny flash in between these clips right here. So I'll create a new solid and just cut it to make it two frames long. And I'll actually cut this solid up in a few different parts like this, three different parts. And I'll split them like this to create a few different flashes. The first one I'll drag down to like 30% opacity. The second one to like 50. Then the last one I'll keep around 80. So I have three flashes going on like this. Or actually, I'll just keep two of them, keyframe the opacity and drag down. So now I got this going on. And I'll actually paste this at the end too, right over here. So now I got this. I mean, it's a cool effect. You can spice it up, get some cool looks. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And as always, check out my packs that I got linked in the description if you guys are trying to level up your edits. But I'll see you guys in the next one.